If you really want to become a successful full stack blockchain developer, then you have to use this tool in your next step. When you will go for internship, when you go for job or when you will build freelancing project for your clients, they want you to be use this tool for managing the context of the application. Whatever project we have built on the channel so far, in all of these projects we have used React context management for managing the entire state of the application. But there is a problem in those context management going with the simple approach. Because when you want to build a scalable application like production ready application, in that context you have to utilize something dedicated for managing the state. You can't go with a simple one. It's absolutely okay to use with a simple application, but when the application is big like NFT marketplace, Uniswap, or you want to provide us some sort of token management, in that context, it's really very important for you to go with this Redux toolkit, which is so powerful and it's very easy to manage the entire state of your application. In this video, I'll give you a quick overview that what are the things we have in Redux toolkit, how you can utilize in your next project, and I already have a dedicated course on this where we have used this particular tool to build amazing movie application where we have done everything with the help of this Redux toolkit. So you can check this out. So let me take you through this small presentation and explain you that what are the things we have to keep in mind and how you can include this Redux toolkit in your project. So right now we have multiple version but you have to pick this particular one. So if you look at the package, so this package called Redux JS slash Redux toolkit. So this one is the recent updated package which is really so powerful again okay? so you can read about it there is tons of documentation is available you can easily able to follow that but here we're going to talk about the basic functionality that how you can set the store how you can create a slice how you can change the payload so this is how you can install so let's come back to the next slice and here we have the reducer and this one is so powerful so as you can see in the short description it's mentioned that in reducer a reducer is also known as a reducing function is a javascript function that takes the current state of the state and an action as a parameter so you can define that what are the data you want to store in the reducer and you can provide an action on that and you can simply update the entire state of the application you can see here they have given the example so here they have taken the action and here here they have taken the state and here we have the actions so you can usually able to use it and you can easily able to provide the entire functionality okay again i will tell you every single thing in a practical way just wait a moment i'll show you the code that how i have utilized this reducer how you have how i have utilized the store in the actual application so just bear with me so this is how you can set up your reducer if i come back to the next slides here you can see here we have the action so what action you want to perform so like you want to filter the data based on certain user action so you can easily able to change the data without removing the entire array so you can do those kind of filtration so you can see that's what they have mentioned here like basic action objects of the shopping list that remove all items from the list so if you want to filter something you can do that very easily so this is how you can pass the action again which i will tell you pass the action let's move to the next slide and here you can see that this is how you can create the subscription so what do you do generally what do you do you simply create a store on that you can provide this get state and this will give you a couple of function which you can easily able to call it and you can simply make a request and you will have the entire data again right now it sounds like an alien but it's super duper easy when you will build this particular project so this is how you can create a subscribe method using in the redux toolkit so if i come back to the next and then we have dispatch this one is really very powerful for example you are making an api call to any particular router and you are getting data initially at the at the time of page reload but what if user wants to do certain query like he wants to filter the data or make certain query to the endpoint and you want to display the data based on the endpoints so all you have to do is you have to use this dispatch method and you can simply pass the data and that data will be taken into the state and it will automatically filter the data without manipulating the actual array actual data so that is the best part you are creating a slice kind of things and getting the data so that's what they have mentioned here that how you can create a dispatch method and how you can easily able to call to the state variable so here you can see that we have this state we have defined the initial value and here we are simply updating the action so on the action we have the payload and that's how we can easily able to trigger our state variable hope things are making sense to all of you guys that how you can use this dispatch method again i will tell you just wait i'll show you about the actual code that how i have used that in the actual project so this is how you can define this dispatch if i come back to the next one here we have the get state so what happened that whenever you want to create any state for example, I have created an endpoint where I want to make an API request. So when you define a method, it will automatically create a get request. Use get request. 
all you have to do is to call that use get request in your front end like in your application and you will have the data you don't need to declare a state variable all you have to define it and it will automatically generate this get request for you okay so again i will show you just 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 follow along with me so if i come back to the next one here we have the store so what happened that you have to create a store if you really want to share the entire data of your application so what you will do you will create a store you will configure certain value in that for example here you can see in the store we have defined all of these variables so whenever the application will reload at the time it's going to pass this initial value and it's going to reload the data based on the store and based on this store, you can easily able to manipulate the data in the entire application. Okay, so this is how you can configure. So we have multiple options on that. We have this get state, we have dispatch, and on the dispatch, we have the action, and on the action, we have the payload. So you can easily able to access that. We have also have the subscriber. So this one is really better for the authentication. So you can easily able to find out that who is actually interacting with your application. So you can identify that as well. So this is what we have. Okay, Redux, Redux, Redux store. Now let's move to the next one and here we have the configuration. So we have to configure our application in that we have to define that what are the data we want to configure. Maybe you have a, you have a separate like logics which you want to use as an authentication or maybe you have an initial data type which you want to render at the time of payload without the authentication. So that's kind of configuration you can able to do here. And that's what the example they have given here. So you can easily able to create a reducer and you can provide the path and you can also restrict bit on the user actions. So this is what we have, okay? This is how you can configure. So if I come back to here, you can see you can easily able to create a slice as well. So this slice you will create using the Redux toolkit. What happened? You're not actually manipulating the real data. So for example, you get hundreds of array. So this slice you will create on the data type, which is set as a state variable, as a context management, and you are simply changing the data in the context, not actual data. So that's the best part. You can create separate slice. It's totally up to you that how many slices you want to create, but you can do that. And this is the best part. Of, this is the best part I like about this Redux toolkit that you can create multiple slice. Okay, so this is how you can do that. This is the configuration you can do. So there is a payload also available which you can add it. But for the simplicity, this is how you can go with that. Now, if I go to the next slice, you, you will have this particular one, create slice. So here they have given the same example that you can easily able to add multiple slides. So they have given the name, they have given the initial state, and here they have the reducer. So what they are doing here, they are exactly updating the data in the same slice by to this two method. Okay, the multiple argument you can pass in the slice and you can create the entire object. So this is how you can do that. If you come back to the next one, here we have the slice method with an object. So you can easily able to pass object as well. So here we have taken an object and here we are passing that. So this is the another option, other method you have to create a slice. So there is tons of method which you can follow to create a slice. So this is what we have. So this these are the things which you have to keep in mind when you want to work with this Redux toolkit. And trust me, it's really very powerful. So this is the one tool I have used extensively in the course which I have built, AI Power Movie Application. So let me show you. And here you can see that this is the entire source code of the movie application we have built. So this is the movie application which I'm talking about. If you if I scroll down here, so you can simply come and watch this video and that I've explained that how you can make a request AI voice assistant to build an application. So the thing I want to highlight here is if I come back here in the API section, you will find that we are using extensively Redux toolkit. We are managing the genres and categories. We are building a context management. Then we are rendering the data in the page and we are making multiple requests at the time of page load and we are doing slice based on the search. So if I come back here, if I take you to the code, you can see this is the code and here I have this four different stores I have created, four different files I have created. So this is the first one is for the authentication. So if I come here, you can see this is how I have created the slice. And here I have defined the user authentication value. So we have the user, we have the is authentication by default is going to be false. And here we have the session ID because we are using a backend API. So whenever user will locked into the application, we're going to assign the session ID and we're going to keep it. And here you can see here we have the auth slice and this is how you can manage the authentication. And this is how you can create a slice. So this is the one create slice we have created for the authentication. If I 
about this genre and category and this one is my favorite because here we have building the entire genres entire data because it's a movie application and we have multiple categories like we have authors we have the we have the popular movies list movies high rated movie so the entire state we are managing here you can see this is genre and category we have set the initial values then we are simply updating the initial value with the help of this payload because this action has a lot of data on that we can simply add the payload so it will update the entire things here so this is what we have here then we are simply moving doing the search based on the query so this is the one we have now if I come back to the store so as I told you that this is how you have to configure your store you can have multiple files multiple feature in your application and that's what you have to configure if you don't configure in the store the data is not going to be available in the application just like in the react context what we do we build out the entire function then we wrap the entire application in a in in our app js and then we'll have the access of the data and that's the exact thing we have to do but we can do in a more elegant way giving less load to our backend part once we have the data we can easily be able to play around with the data and feed into the component that's really good so we have the one more like configure store we have here and here we have the entire api call so we are using the movie application and you can see this is how you can build an api request it's really so powerful you don't need to make an api request over and over again all you have to do is to simply pass the query in the particular method just like this here we have configured the reducer path and here we have the base query means every api will have base query for example the blockchain.com so this is the main domain on that i have the multiple pages like account then we have the user then we have about in the same way we are defining the base query endpoint and then we are simply passing the endpoint in the other url so here you can see we have this builder and that builder we are simply passing the names and we are making the request with all the data and this is absolutely cool because you don't need to make a uh, api request over and over again building the entire endpoint all you have to do is to simply dispatch the data in the query and that would be available in the store and in that way we can easily able to change the entire state of the application so we have built multiple state you can see get movie by search then we have the movie by category movie by genres popular we have multiple queries so as you can see as i told you that if i come back to the presentation here we have the get method so if i show you this as you can see the store in the store we have available this particular method called get store and that's what you can see here so when you will define so when you will define a method so here i have defined this particular method get list it will automatically create a use hook for me so you can see it automatically create this use hook query and all i have to do is to simply call this query in the component and, and i will have the data so if I define if it if I talk so if I talk about this get movie by actor ID it will automatically generate this use query method and all I have to do is to simply call this one so if I come back here if I take you to the component section in the into the component section and if I take you to the let's go back to the pages so this is the page I have and if I go back to the let's say hmm, this is the actors this is the movie and this is the index.js so if i come here you can see what i'm doing here so what i'm doing i'm using this use selector which allow me to get it and in that i'm getting the function so you can see i'm getting this particular use get movie by query all i have to do is to simply call this hook and it will give me this three method data error and the loading state and this particular hook need this three information if once i pass this it will return me the data and i can simply pass to my component that's so powerful if you talk about the header component so if i come back to the header you can see what i'm doing here in the header what i'm doing as i told you about the dispatch method you can see how we are dispatching the data into our into our query object so here we are dispatching the data so here what the users is doing user searching the movie based on the keyword so we are simply dispatching this data the keyword into a store and that store is filtering out the entire data by the slice method we have configured and we'll have the data so it's really powerful so again i'm telling you that if you don't know about this redux toolkit you are missing a huge chunk if you go for a job and internship and if you call yourself a full stack blockchain developer then you have to know this particular tool this particular tool it's absolutely mandatory you cannot escape that part because they're going to ask you to build application using this particular one have to be really good in this redux toolkit so again i'm telling you come here and this is one of the best project i have built to give you a complete idea that how you can use this powerful tool and build an application we have built this movie application 
powered by AI and you can able to see that how powerful it is all you have to do is to simply change the entire application entire state of the application by the tool so again I want you to come and have a look watch the video that what you're going to build and this is the must build project I want you to all include in a portfolio to show your skills that you can build a web 2 application powered by AI and you can use this Redux toolkit in your project so come here and have a look that what you're going to learn and what you're going to exactly build okay so that's the only thing i want to talk about in this video hope you guys have got a complete idea that what you have to learn if you really want to call yourself full stack blockchain developer and using this powerful tool in your next dab when you will start building a production later application so if you're new to my channel hit like and subscribe that will motivate me a lot and do let me know in the comment section that how many of you know the redux toolkit and how many of you have built any project using this particular tool and what is the difference between using a normal redux toolkit or using a react context map Management. so do let me know in the diff in the comment if you guys have used this tool and how powerful it is so that's the only thing i want to talk about in this video hope this video helps you a lot to give you a better idea that what you have to focus on and what direction you have to take to learn the skill with that i mean this if you're new to my channel hit like and subscribe that will motivate me a lot to come up with this new videos and you guys will get the benefit